Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to start building the Edward Fokker D7 from the Du doch nicht kit, which includes three planes. This is the middle one right here. The kit itself is beautiful and it comes with a bunch of extra goodies that typically Edward kits come with. Opening up this kit we can see that it actually has four sprues, quite a bit for a small plane like this. The first one contains the wing and uh, some details for the cockpit and interior. The second sprue uh, contains the other parts of the wing and some engine details on the inside here. The third sprue contains the fuselage parts as well as some uh, bits of the wheels and for the interior I got the exhaust pipes there. And the last sprue is just smaller details, including the uh, the wing struts, this weird stitch zipper thing they had on the bottom, and more interior details, the rudder pedals right there, and some smaller grab handles and hooks and small parts. There's also this uh, little sheet of colored photo etch, which includes a bunch of small details mostly for the inside there's the seat belts which I'm not going to use the instrument panel and some uh, machine gun cooling jackets as usual with Edward there's also a set of pre-cut masks yes even for these biplanes uh, and usually they just for biplanes include uh, these uh, wheel masks for easier painting of the tires and lastly, there's some nice resin parts here. There's the cockpit floor with the seat. And this lovely figure of Ernst Udet, the pilot, who was the second highest scoring ace of World War I. And I'm gonna try and give a, a shot at painting him. So, let's get started. First things first, the resin dust is toxic. So whenever you're dealing with it, sanding it, cutting it off, make sure to wear some sort of uh, respirator to protect you from inhaling those particles and lay down something that can catch all the particles uh, that fly off as you're cleaning those parts. And I just carefully come in there with a hobby knife to clean the excess uh, resin off and then just a quick test fit to make sure everything's okay. Next, I remove the plastic fuselage halves with some sharp side cutters and the propeller as well. And I just start cleaning the edges again with a hobby knife. Yeah, so hobby blades are sharp. Surprise, surprise. Don't be like me. Be safe when you model. A quick test fit shows that these fuselage halves go together very well, only just a bit of flash that needs to get cleaned up. The propeller then got the same treatment and there's actually this bolt right here that I needed to remove in order to uh, glue the respective photo wedge part to it, just to add a little bit of detail to it. Time to fire up the compressor. So I started off by base coating everything with some Tamiya flat white and I did this because oil paints are actually translucent and you need that light base coat showing through in order to get a good bright result. I also did this to the interior of the fuselage around the cockpit area because there's going to be some lozenge decals there and that's just to make them pop a little bit more in the already secluded and dark uh, interior. So next, oil paints. I'm using these three shades, some ochre, faded dark yellow, which is an orange, and brown wash to get the desired shades I need. And I'm using this uh, old, flat, disgusting looking brush that I'm not afraid to beat up in order to paint the wood grain. And I just keep mixing the three colors without really any ratios uh, until I get the uh, desired shade that I need. 
And next, I'm just slapping this on in thick coats, making sure to get the paint everywhere into every uh, nook and cranny here uh, to make sure we have no white parts left. And then I wipe my brush and just slowly start wiping all of those oils away in one direction, which creates the brush strokes create this cool wood grain texture. The same goes for the propeller, although I mix a lighter, more orangish shade. And the grain is supposed to go this way here. So start on this half of the blade and go through the center to the other as like one continuous brush stroke. And the same thing applies here. I'm just putting on the paint in a generous amount, making sure to cover every single part of the propeller. And one important thing is to always make sure you're painting from the outside of the blade towards the inside. So uh, notice how I flip the blade there. And this is just easier for me. It's easier to keep the brush stroke straight and it's gonna make the grain more consistent and more realistic. So then the same thing, I just remove the excess oil paint and it gives the propeller this nice grainy uh, wood texture. Next, you're going to want to wait till the paint dries, which can be anywhere from 24 to 72 hours with oil paints, and just uh, apply a clear coat over top to protect it for the next step. Now this is actually a different propeller for a different plane, but I essentially just did the same thing. I just covered it with a coat of clear and let that dry. And here I'm beginning to draw the lines with some brown oil paint and a thin brush, carefully first mapping out where the lines will cross to the other side of the blade and just slowly uh, drawing them on, making sure to uh, be as precise as possible. However, this is the beauty of oil paints because we can use some odorless enamel thinner and just remove any unwanted paint that uh, we don't need on the propeller. Uh, very carefully though, because we don't want to flood the surface with enamel thinner that'll just dissolve and wipe away any of the work we have on it. So yeah, the seat. I screwed this up with painting it white because for some reason I thought it was supposed to be a wooden color when the instructions clearly said red brown. So I'll just paint the uh, leather seat with these acrylic colors here. So I'll use two drops of the brown, one drop of red, one drop of drying retarder which also acts as a flow improver and one drop of tap water to thin everything out. So I mixed the paints together and got this leather red brown kind of color. And checking up on some reference images, the seat on the plane was in fact coated with leather, unlike a lot of other seats in uh, the World War I's planes, which were either sort of like a basket material or just plain wood. I then painted the seat in two coats with a flat brush to get uh, an even coverage and to get the paint layer opaque. So that's it for today my friends. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed that. I'll be making more videos in this series I guess where I'm going to be filming how I'm building up this uh, Fokker D7, and uh, yeah, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>